are still becoming. All right. Uh, so, Yasmin, are you in the house? If so, give us a, a shout in the comments. I know you already have the link. We'll be going live with her on a Q&A here in a second. Before we do that, I want to recap last week's call. And I also want to give a direct call to action for those of you who are watching on YouTube. If you So our, our lives get a whole lot of attention on YouTube. If you watch us on YouTube, let me tell you a little bit about what you're seeing. What you're seeing is a community of entrepreneurs who collaborate to create change and build businesses. And so the world is changing. You know this. Most of you are sitting at home. We're a community of entrepreneurs who build businesses that actually matter. And once a week or so, we get together to go live and go into each other's businesses, talk about what's working, and go over some strategies for growing the businesses that they have. If you are sitting on the sidelines and you are not part of this community, you need to come join us over at capitalism.com slash one. We're a community of collaborative capitalists who are working together to build businesses that are actually really freaking exciting. Yasmin, you're in the house. I love that you've got your, your cup ready to go. Um, before I uh, bring you on live, I want to recap last week's call. So I'm going to bring up, I gave you all some assignments, and I want to add a few additional pieces based on the questions that I got in the Facebook group or, or via email. So I'm just going to show you a couple points here. So first of all, we're, I, I call this just one site. Because you really can have just one site ever that makes a full-time income. And by full-time income, I mean $10,000 to $100,000 per month. Yes, I do have friends who generate $100,000 a month or more with just one site doing just this process with none of their own products, none of their own big teams, just having one authority site that gets a lot of traffic and they can sell things to that audience. So in case you missed it, an authority site is simply a content-driven website that is built as a reference guide. It is built to be a content engine for other people to reference in their own materials. And therefore, it gets links and it gets traffic and it builds an audience. And it does that for a long time. It builds over time. The more people talk about you, the more references that people, people give to you, the higher you rank in Google, the more of a community you start to build. Now, here is the step-by-step -step that I gave you last week, and I, I added a few things to this. So the first step is if you take an interest or a hobby or a desire or a passion that you actually enjoy and want to learn more about, I took the example of travel. The second step is to brainstorm 10 written pieces that would be topical right now. And a topical piece is what is going to get other people to link to you, especially in the short term. So right now, this week, uh, with as short as the news cycle is, right now, uh, some sh some written pieces that are topical about travel may be masks and airplanes. Each airline's mask rules. Somebody who is traveling is going to be looking up, okay, what are Delta Airlines mask rules? And then you're going to have a piece on exactly that. Doesn't require you to travel, doesn't require you to interview anybody, just requires you to know enough about the topic to guy for what each airline's rules are about wearing masks. Uh, another example would be black-owned businesses to visit the next time that you are in Minneapolis. Whatever is topical right now, you would write about, and that becomes the link piece that other people are referencing over time. The third step is to brainstorm 10 money pieces that are topical forever. A money piece is simply a piece of content that is going to be relevant for a very long period of time. So we can sell advertising on it, we can sell product on it, and we can do a lot of cool things with it. And a, a money piece for that, or a long-term piece, would be quaint towns in upstate New York to visit during your New York City vacation. So that's going to be a piece about an area for a group of people that are traveling in an area, and that is targeting a very specific group that is going to rank over time, and that is going to allow you to monetize it with ads, with, uh, with, with travel companies, with product reviews, and all kinds of stuff. We'll talk about that in the next slide. And then the fourth step, which I neglected to put on here last week, is to start making connections with other websites and adding guest posts and recommended links on their sites to get backlinks back to you. 
This will make you grow very quickly if your content is good. The minute you start getting these references from people in your network or by making guest posts to other websites, then you start getting links and free traffic from that website and from Google as well. There's a training in your members area. It's in the bonus section of your members area that will show you how to get really high quality backlinks by doing guest posting. So that's in your members area. It's in the bonus section. Now, here are a couple of very easy ways to create content. Number one, there's a there's several apps. The one we like is called Otter, where you just talk into it, it transcribes it in real time, and then you go and edit it, post it, it becomes a, a piece of content. Number two is to go interview an expert on the topic, get it transcribed, and post that. The third is to take a bunch of YouTube videos or podcasts or other people's content and summarize it into one great piece that serves the people that you are, are speaking to. You can comment your opinion or comment your opinion on someone else's opinion. Or the, the final and fastest would be to just hire somebody else to take your ideas, give them a first pass, and to post them. So there's easy ways to create content as long as you are on top of what the, the market, the community is talking about, and you're creating content that is going to be a reference for those people. All right, and so here are some, some easy ways that you could start to think about monetization. I got a lot of questions about monetization over the last week, and my preference would be that you think just about creating great content right now, but the inevitable question always comes up, like how would I monetize this once this starts to, once this starts to grow? There, I, I came up with six ways in about six minutes. Find affiliate products in your space and review them. This is the lowest hanging fruit. It's also how I made my first hundred grand working from my dorm room. Actually, I started on my parents' dial-up computer in my living room. I would do it late at night, just reviewing products in the space. I would review them on ClickBank. I'd review them on private affiliate programs. I would, I would, I would. There was another one. There was another big site back then that did a bunch of affiliate stuff that does isn't around anymore. But there are affiliate products everywhere that you can review, give your opinion on, and make that a standalone article on your website. Last week, we talked about launch jacking. That's another strategy that you could use of just getting out ahead of products that are coming down the pipe and getting your, your site to create content around them so you're getting exposure around that product launch. The second is to go to product creators in your space, people who have info products, physical products, training courses, certifications, interview them, do a long post, about, transcribe the interview and edit that so that you're doing a, a, a piece of content that highlights them and you're an affiliate for their product. Um, you could also do this as a sponsorship. Just this week, there's a popular blogger who takes guest submissions, but he charges $3,500 for a guest submission because he knows that you're going to feature your product or your service when you write on his website. So he just charges people to do the interview, transcribe it, and talk about your product, which is, I had never seen that before, but it's really interesting. No, find related podcasts, see what sponsors are showing up on those podcasts and go create content around that topic or those sponsors. Go in there and find out who is actually paying to show up in front of this community and then go create content specifically around them or that topic. Next, build an email list and nurture that over time. If you have not seen the training we did about building an email list, go back and watch the building audience topic that we did, which is about building a six-figure email list in about 90 to 120 days. Create a community or launch your own product. Launch a physical product. Start your own business. Start your own agency. Charge advertising. Uh, do sponsored posts. Sell. There you go. There's a thousand ways that you can do this. Now, last week I gave you an assignment. First of all, I want to know how many of you actually did the assignment. That's what I want to hear. How many of you went and made a, a list or decided on a topic that you would actually enjoy talking about or learning more about? 
did you make a list of other people that you could connect to in the space, like micro influencers, bloggers, and advertisers? Brainstorm 10 content pieces that would be fun and set up an account on scmrush.com. scmrush.com will show you where you're ranking for keywords, where your competitors show up, and other insights that will show you where you move over time. I want to know, Sue Anderson did it. Good. Cole did it. Good work. Yolande did it. Ron did it. Good. Ron, I was hoping you would do it because this is perfect for the space that you are in. So, Ron, if all you did, so I know I know quite a bit about a lot of y'all's businesses. So, you know, Ron is in the pet space. If you take somebody like Ron, who is in the pet space and wants to get into physical products and build a community in that space, then when you've got a website that is ranking for thousands of keywords or even hundreds of keywords, and you're starting to get free traffic around that topic and you're building a community around that, then selling whatever you want becomes really fast and easy. So that's, that, is, that is one of the ways, this strategy is one of the ways that you can build a very long-term audience and it support all of your other ventures which is going to be kind of the foundation of the case study that we'll go through from inside of, of one of our own. All right, uh, we'll go to Yasmin here in a second. First, hey, Ryan, hey, Duncan, hey, Fernando, hey, too. It's good to see you guys so active on here. Thank you. Hey, Asfar, good morning. All right, Yasmin, give me a thumbs up if you're ready to come join me live. All right, let's do it. Good morning, Yasmin. Good morning, Ryan. Happy Father's Day. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. How are you? Great. It's um, 7.20 here in the morning. <laughs> thank, thank you. Ha hashtag that. Thank you, Yasmin, for being up early and, and sharing with us this morning. Appreciate it. So uh, first of all, why don't you start telling me like, how long have you been doing your site? I started my site. It launched October 1st of 2016. I was working on it for probably six or eight months before that. Okay. Um, I published it by accident, and then I didn't know how to unpublish it, so I just went with it. I wasn't quite ready, but I just did it, and I went with it, and then it evolved over time. So it's been almost four years that the site has been up. And what were you doing before then? I was working in the corporate world. I was um, in, in tech and film, and then I had my son. And it was hard. I, I didn't want to be commuting every day and, and dealing with my laptop and being, you know, working all the time. Um, so I wanted something else. I wanted flexibility. I wanted to be in charge of my time. And so you said you were working on the site for like six or eight months before you went live. What were you doing in that time? At that point, I was learning. I was this, this was, you know, four and a half years ago. Um, I feel like it was a different time. I feel like there's a lot more information right now. So at the time I was just like learning and getting a handle on what I wanted to do. I was kind of planning. And then I started writing my blog posts before I was ready to go live. Now I would just publish from day one once I had my domain name. But at that point I was just like soaking up information. Okay. So, so you said something really interesting there where you, you said you would just go live or you would just start publishing now when you had your domain name. Do you mean that if you could go over it again, you would just, you would just, make posts and just make mistakes and be okay not having it all perfect from day one is that what you mean absolutely i would the moment that i bought my domain name i would go out and buy hosting i would install wordpress and i would get my site up because that establishes your domain and it also just establishes a commitment to what you're doing and then i would just start putting up posts because no one's really going to see them in the beginning anyway so i would just get the posts up get comfortable with what i was doing make mistakes and fix it as I go. But I was I was like really in the planning mode and figuring out what I was doing back then. But now I know what I'm doing. So I would just totally start from day one. So would you share a little bit about what you blog about and what you write or what you write about and why you write about it? Sure. So um, I'm a mom blogger. I created the Gentle Nursery, which is gentlenursery.com. And it is a mix of like non-toxic baby products holistic baby care, like natural minded parenting, um, and like healthy pregnancy. Um, the reason that I created that site was because once I got pregnant with my first baby back in 2013, I became very aware of the chemicals I was 
putting on my body, the things I was eating, the baby products I wanted to buy. And I was just kind of appalled at like how, you know, brazen these, these product manufacturers were putting harsh chemicals in products, especially ones made for babies. And I did a ton of research. I had like a huge learning curve and I figured out like, okay, there are safer options, but you really need to know what you're getting into. You really need to know what you're buying. Um, and you just have to be smart about it, especially when you're pregnant. Like you want to be smart about the things you're putting in your body. So um, I, I did all that research. And then I realized like, one, there wasn't a resource for someone like me. And two, there probably are other people like me, even though we might be the minority, like there might be other people like myself that want to find this kind of information. And maybe there, there's a way to make something out of this. So I did, I didn't really know what I was doing. But um, I wanted to like, I had an inkling that I could make a business out of this. And I like I overheard a mom and her daughter who was pregnant at Nordstrom one day talking about like similar things, looking for similar products, like saying, OK, well, this one looks like it's made from cotton. This one might be better than other products. Like they just seemed like they were looking for the same kind of things that I was. And it gave me the idea that like, OK, there definitely are other people that that scrutinize products the same way I do. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to launch this site and just kind of see what comes of it. And, you know, and now you it's, know. it's, it's a business. It's my full-time income. At, at what point after launch did you make like your first 10 bucks? And what was that like? It was a long time. It took me a long time because when I started, I didn't know what I was doing. It probably took me over a year to make my first, it was $12. I remember. Woo! 12 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, it was a big day though. It was like, or like a big month, I should say. And it, it definitely took over here because I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't know how to use the tools available to me. So it took time to figure all that out. Okay, and how did you make those 12 bucks and what did it feel like? It was through the Amazon Affiliates program. And um, you know what, it felt, it felt really validating because up until that point I had just been hustling to get my my content out there. I was posting in Facebook groups. I was doing the Pinterest hustle. I was doing everything just to get like a couple hundred page views. Um, and it felt really, it felt really validating. It was like, okay, yes, I made $12 and this is the beginning of something. So it felt good. So, so I was, I got lucky, right? I was, I was making a hundred dollars a day within, within the first 30 days. And the, I, th I think the reason that I was lucky was I went extremely focused on people who were buying things. So if you're watching this and you're like, I don't want to do this for, for a year and make 12 bucks, the thing that I did was I went super targeted into the late stage of the buying cycle, which was, which was writing review posts, reviews of other people's products, and then building a list of people who were shopping for more and then marketing to them over time. And that allowed me to be really, really focused on the people who were looking to spend money. And Awais just gave me a plug. He said, it, will you find out more in Ryan's book called 12 Months to 1 Million? Yes, you can. So Yasmin, I'm curious, if you were to start now, would you do anything differently in the monetization piece in order to give you that validation earlier in the process? I would do exactly what you just said, which is, understanding the buyer's psychology and um, targeting them in a pro at the point in the process at which they are looking to buy rather than just like kind of putting content out there and hoping it sticks. I think that when you really understand like customer intent or search intent, um, then you are really ahead of the game. And, and like, I'm not surprised Ryan that you were that profitable from pretty much day one because you know you're Ryan and you you know what you're doing and oh, you just I was you have 18 at the time. I wasn't I didn't I didn't know shit back then. <laughs> but you knew you did though because I didn't know any of that when I was starting and I was coming I was running a company like in in the tech space. I didn't understand I didn't have that knowledge and I think it's just it's a really good testament to thinking and understanding psychology, understanding people and and buyer psychology. So if you just know that and like if you start kind of reflecting on yourself like if you're going to buy a barbecue what are you going to search for online what kind of search are you going to put into google are you going to type in how to barbecue or are you going to type in like what is the best barbecue or barbecue for a small space and if you're if you're thinking like the buyer and you can write content that serves that need and answers those questions 
one, Google's going to like you, and two, the customer's going to like you. You're going to provide useful information, and you will get that sale. But I didn't know any of that when I started. It took a long time to figure that out, and I was still just like learning the process of blogging. Now, if I were to start, it would be a much different process. It would be a totally different game. I, I think you just gave everybody a brain gasm, which is if you understand that search intent, when somebody's saying, when somebody's typing in how to barbecue, they're not ready to buy. They are, they are looking. But if they're typing in best barbecue for a small space or the, the best barbecue grill, the best barbecue grill for blank. Those those types of keywords are late in the buying cycle when they are ready to make a decision and move forward. And that's when they are really engaged in the in the content that that you are producing. So Yasmin, it took you a year to make 12 bucks. And then what was the process like after it started being somewhat profitable? Where, where did you take it from there? So once I started figuring out my own unique formula for what works, um, I started to grow. I mean, it started to basically just snowball. Another thing that has been really integral in my growth is um, I have a Facebook group. It currently has over 10,000 people in it. And very early on, I created that. I, I, I'd say probably about a year at the year mark, um, I created the Facebook group and I really started connecting with my audience. And I started getting feedback from them about like, what they were looking for, um, questions they had about the products I was reviewing. And that really helped me to hone in on what I was writing about because I was literally talking to my readers on a daily basis. Um, so I think from that point, once it started to grow, I not only figured out what I was doing, got better at it, but I really started the process of building the audience and tailoring my message and tailoring um, my offering to, like you say, in your book and, and in general, like to a specific person. And that's really what it comes down to. It's like, you know, you, you're writing for a specific person. Other people might read it. You know, I call my audience the non-toxic moms and I write my articles for non-toxic moms. Other people might read it, but, and they might get value out of it, but I know exactly who I'm writing for. I write to the level of detail that my non-toxic moms care about and that's who I'm serving. And I serve them in everything I do. So really connecting with my audience, I think was like the big tipping point and the really the next step for my, my blog. Yeah. And you, you said something uh, that was about writing for people, like writing for the audience rather than writing for like the search engine or writing for writing for anybody except the, the specific person. Could you, could you comment a little bit about that and tell me like, did, did you have to make a few mistakes before getting there? How did you, how did, and, and, and what, what does that really look like to write for a person rather than writing for like a search engine? Okay. Well, first and foremost, anytime I write an article, I am writing to one individual. I literally, in my head, I have like a, a picture of, of one of my readers and I tend to pick someone based on what the topic is. And I'm really like literally writing the article with them in mind. I know that one person is reading the article, not like a group of people. So I always initially talk to um, one person, I always say you. And the person that I'm writing to is one of my non-toxic moms. And I know that they are ingredient savvy or they want to learn more about ingredients. They want to know what is the safest practice. They want, they want science-based information. And so that's how I write my articles. I write it for them. I don't write it for just anyone who might be interested in like, let's say a bottle warmer or a baby bottle or something like that. But I'm writing specifically for the most scrutinizing, ingredient savvy, um, really, really discerning moms. And that's what, that's my brand, that's what works. So my articles don't please everyone. Not everyone reads my site. My site is not for everyone. I don't get a million page views a month. I have a very specific niche. I have a very specific audience. And that's like everything I cater to is, is everything I write caters to that person. Um, and so like, I would write, I would write an article on like, let's say for example, the most, um, like the best organic crib mattresses. That's an article I have that performs really well. And the crib mattresses I recommend tend to be more expensive. I don't recommend cheap mattresses, but you would find somebody else that might write an article on like the least expensive crib mattresses. And that might have a much wider volume and, and perform really well, but I don't do that. I'm writing authentically for the people that I serve. And that's, I think, why my blog has been successful because I never really started it thinking, I'm going to create a business 
and um, I'm just gonna like do whatever I think will stick. I, I just said, you know what, let me see if this works. I'm I think there are other people like myself. I'm gonna write for them and see what happens. And I've always just approached it that way. Like I'm writing for people like myself. I'm writing for my non-toxic moms. That way, like I'm writing for people like myself. I'm writing for my non-toxic moms. That that's beautiful. And and I want to, I want to compare that to someone that I I really, I I respect this person, but I just love their business story. And it's Dave Asprey. Where you know if you go back, if you go back ten years, Dave Asprey in the corporate world starts a blog, and the blog is about putting butter in your coffee and upgrading your life using modafinil and other biohacks. And, that, that, and it was called the bulletproofexecutive.com. It wasn't bulletproof. There was no brand. There was no Whole Foods. There was, there was just, he was writing about the bulletproof executive, right? So he starts this blog and then he starts selling. He starts a podcast. He builds a little community. He starts selling ads on the podcast. That becomes what became Bulletproof Coffee, which became Bulletproof MCT Oil. And then it started and it built over time. And then he raised money and now everybody knows what Bulletproof Coffee is. So there was – but it started with a real grind. Like it started – it started with a real grind. Um, Trenton says, can we get your thoughts on modafinil? Um, I have mixed thoughts on modafinil, uh, but I am a fan. I am, I am personally a fan. Actually – I don't know if this is addressed to me or to Yasmin about thoughts on modafinil. Um, I think it is a very helpful tool um, that not everyone should take and you should take very carefully. Yasmin, do you have a – I don't know why I'm even going down this modafinil rabbit hole, but do you have an opinion on modafinil? I don't know what it is. Okay, awesome. So we're all caught up. <laughs> so, uh, modafinil is a, uh, a pharmaceutical nootropic that Dave Asprey kind of made popular about 10 years ago. And uh, uh, has has mixed reviews. Actually, so a lot of people don't. I'm just going to go down this rabbit hole for a second because I've done some research on this. A lot of people don't know this, but your your there's there's like a few different brain types that your brain will actually fire in different ways to produce different neurons and different chemicals. And for different brain types, your brain will respond differently to different inputs. And so that's why some people will be like, but Jeff knows the most amazing thing ever. And some people will be like, uh, didn't feel anything or that made me really jittery or really nervous or whatever. It's kind of the case with all pharmaceuticals. Anyway, let's get off the pharmaceutical talk for a second. Yasmin, back to you. Yasmin, would you tell me a little bit about your SEO process? You're out there writing for the audience. I think that is so important in SEO because it increases time on site. It increases the, the, the um, amount of people who are going to link to you because they're having a good experience. But do you do any SEO sauce that you are adding to the website? You know what? Without SEO, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have the audience that I have. So SEO is a really big and important part of what I do. And I think that my site started to take off once I really started to learn about SEO. Um, and, and the more I learned about it, the more it really grew. So SEO is, is an important part of having a, a site because it gives you organic traffic in the search engines, basically in Google. Um, and so without that, you can't really organically grow a blog. So if you are approaching this, you know, starting a new site, or if you have an existing site, you have to focus on SEO because you want to please both Google and by pleasing Google, you're also pleasing the customer. It means that you are providing valuable information to the, to the reader, not customer, to the reader, um, answering their questions. And you are also just providing a positive customer or reader experience. Um, so for me, I mean, yeah, SEO is, is a huge focus of mine. Everything that we currently write or position should be optimized for SEO. There's some old articles I have that probably aren't and could be potentially optimized. But as far as like what I try to focus on, I try to focus on, like we said before, those um, buyer intent keywords um, or reviews where I know someone is at least looking something up, those perform pretty well on my site. So I'm trying to write more of those. But I really try to focus on what is the reader doing when they go to Google? What kind of information do they want? And how can I serve it up to them in a way that not only pleases Google, but also pleases the reader and gives them all the information that they need? Um, and commenting further on like the whole positive customer, the reader experience, um, you have to make sure that your site isn't slow, doesn't 
take forever to load because Google will not give you any, any love then because Google's all about pleasing the reader too. So the more you can please the reader by giving them the good experience that they want and the good information they want, then the more Google likes you. I, I don't know if anyone noticed, uh, but we completely redesigned capitalism.com about 45 days ago. And when we relaunched it, our traffic from Google went up 40% because it was so much faster. So the site speed went way up and our, and our rankings just skyrocketed all over the place. And we started getting way, way more traffic. So what Yasmin is saying is that the better experience you're giving the customer the more that Google is going to reward that. And they measure that with a few things. They measure that with how long does the person stay on your website? They measure that with how, how many other pages are they visiting? How many links are coming to the site? So is the person, okay. is the person landing on the page and leaving or are they getting really plugged into the site? They measure that with Google Chrome. So for, for the, now a lot of people will try and trick the search engines but what Yasmin is saying is that she built her site for the user, so there's naturally a pull towards satisfying Google as well. Now, uh, Yasmin, this has been a full-time thing for you for a few years. Is that correct? Yeah. The past couple of years, it has been my full-time income, um, and it's allowed me to stay home with my family, and that's been the main driver behind all of this, is having that freedom. And, and being able to, to work on my own terms. That's, That's the number one thing as a mom. And you know? how, how did you monetize it to the point where it got to that level? And basically, how'd you go from $12 to it being your full-time your full gig? It just started to snowball. Um, and I think that the big tipping point for me was building that community early on Facebook and getting in touch with my audience knowing what they were looking for, knowing what their standards are, and just getting direct feedback from them and being able to cater what I write directly to my audience. Um, but beyond that, it was also just putting out regular content, putting out good content, um, and the actual monetization strategy that I use, like 90% of my monetization is through affiliate marketing. Um, and so I've always done affiliate marketing. I recommend baby products. I recommend um, like products that I vet, I have researched, and I've made sure like that they, I feel that they're safe, they're baby friendly, they're in line with AAP recommendations, but at the same time, they're also not like toxic. Um, so I use that to make my recommendations on the site. And then I have some display ads on the site as well. And they are a small portion of, of my income. I also just launched um, an ebook. It's called the Baby Registry Handbook. And so I'm now trying to create my own products for my audience because I feel that beyond just like recommending products, there are other things that I can do to serve my audience. Like it just always comes back to like, what does the mom need? What does the mom need when she's pregnant? What is she looking for? Um, I think, you know, one of the reasons that this, this works well is because it's like I'm kind of catching people at a moment in their life where they're going through a big transition and there's a big learning curve, especially when you're you're having your first baby. You've probably never changed a diaper before. You have probably never bought a stroller or like know anything about anything related to baby products. There's a lot of education involved with it. So I like to think that I'm doing a lot of that education, helping moms along the journey, making it easier for them. And at the same time, taking them on this transformation of like, creating a non-toxic environment for their baby, creating a non-toxic home and like learning about chemicals. And so I feel like that is one of the reasons that there's such a connection with my audience because there's so much need right there. And I, I just try to make it simpler on them because that's what I wanted. I wanted someone to literally just sit me down and say, Yasmin, this is what diapers you need. This is how you use a stroller. This is how you pick a stroller. This is everything you need for your baby. This is everything you don't need for your baby. And I just, I wanted that so badly. And I had to do all the research myself. It's kind of like giving moms their, their like online village in a sense, because like I picture myself talking directly to the, to my audience, to my reader and telling her exactly what I wish I had known when I went through this, when I was in her shoes. That's beautiful. I don't think you could. I don't think you could have a better strategy than that. Um, if if you are if you're watching live, please lean in for a second because we're going to drop a couple bombs. But but before we do that, so I'm actually going to flip the script here for a second. You know, usually 
when somebody comes on here live, they have they usually have an ask. You know, they either have a question they want to have answered, or they have something that they need help with, or they have an ask of the community. I'm going to flip this a little bit. Here up at, at seven in the morning, sharing how she's built her her authority sites, which are which are going to help all of your businesses. So as we are as we are kind of finishing up this portion of today's hangout, I want you to be thinking of this of how can I do something that benefits Yasmin and her business? So, so, I, so I, I want you to be look, looking for this. Do you know a mommy blogger? Do you know a mom that you could recommend the site to? Uh, Yasmin is going to talk about, she's talked about one of her products and she's got other ones. And I want to ask her about the transition from content to product. And so some of you have Amazon accounts and might want to look for the keyword that she ranks for and buy through that keyword and leave her a review or send a mom that you know a link to the product that she has. So I just want you to be thinking about, okay, this, this woman is showing up at seven in the morning to talk about how she made a full-time income with one of her passions. It's benefiting me. It's, if I actually do this stuff, it's going to help me build a six or seven figure business. So what can you do right now to support this person this entrepreneur who's part of our community and is showing up for all of you. So just be thinking about that as we go into this next session. All right. So Yasmin, I know you're a little embarrassed right now. I didn't tell you I was going to do that. So, but you, you made the, you started making the pivot like three months ago or so, where you started to think about, okay, what could I do to make this a little bit more of a business rather than just a website? And you started thinking about physical products and other things that you can do. Tell me about that transition. It's been bumpy and it's been a new experience and it's been rewarding and it's been confusing all at the same time. So tell me a little bit about that transition of going from content to, to physical. Yes, I will. And before I, I jump into that, I just want to say thank you, Ryan. You're just a wonderful soul and you're just such a big, such a big part, part of this journey. journey. And you're just so kind and wonderful. So thank you so much. That That's, that's really that's touching and, and I'm just blown just away. Blown away. <laughs> um, okay. So... I, I, I just have always wanted to help other people that are in my position. I think that when I, when I had my first baby, I was just like shocked at how hard it is. Even though people tell you it's hard, I don't think you really know. And I've just, I've just always wanted to go back in time and like make things easier for myself, but obviously I can't do that. So I can just pay it forward. Um, and so about two years ago, I started developing a supplement company, knowing that I wanted to help um, moms and babies just live healthier lives and not be held back by health issues. So um, I, I developed a, a prenatal probiotic and that's what I'm holding right here. The company is called Biomology and this is a prenatal probiotic for pregnancy, postpartum and for breastfeeding. And this is designed to basically support the body during pregnancy, um, after pregnancy and, and to support the baby during pregnancy as well. I totally believe in the value of probiotics. I think probiotics are the absolute future. Um, and so I literally have spent two years researching. I worked with a team and we handpicked probiotic strains for their actual benefit, but also to make sure that they were gentle enough to be taken during pregnancy and during such an important and sensitive time. Um, so that process took forever. It was a huge learning curve. But, you know, I've been listening to you for years, Ryan. I think I remember some of your, like, oldest videos, to be honest. Um, and I've just always been motivated to start a company, to start a physical products brand. And I think that the, the coolest thing about what you teach is really in line with my approach, which is, you know, building a brand. It's not just about, like, hawking products on Amazon. It's about you're building a brand, a brand that has meaning. You're building something for a person, for a customer, for a specific individual. And for me, again, it's the non-toxic moms. That's who I'm serving. I'm serving moms that want um, healthy lives, healthy living, and they want to raise their kids and give them the best start in life. Um, so I've, I've been listening to you for years um, and following you and just felt like at a certain point, I was just ready to start taking my business to the next level. Um, and I just, I have really big aspirations, not only as a blogger, but now as a business owner. And I, I want to really change things for people. I want to really provide supplements that help and that have like a benefit. Like I, I say like they're targeted, targeted supplements. It's not just probiotics that we're doing, but like 
they are targeted supplements that have a benefit, that have a purpose. Um, and the process has been, as you said, like it's it's been a rocky process. It's been a crazy process. It's been a wonderful process, but it's been a huge learning experience. And it really challenges you to like get out of yourself and get, you know, come out of your skin and put yourself out there in a way that like is kind of amazing. You know, when I first like held my product, it was just like, it's almost like holding another baby. Like, it's so cool that, you know, you create something out of nothing. And I feel the same way about my blog. I've created this huge community. I've created this, this like movement and it's so cool. And I know you feel the same way because you've created a massive community and a massive following and you've helped so many people. So it's just like this amazing feeling. It's hard. It challenges you. It, it brings out a lot of the uglies, like I've said before, like it really brings out a lot of your issues and stuff, but it's, um, it's so rewarding and it's so cool and it's it's exciting because I'm like at the beginning of it and I know that I'm I'm really building something. So I love that. It feels very rewarding and very fulfilling and there's nothing like launching your first product because once you finally do it, there's so much that you just overcome. And I'm still figuring it all out. Obviously that's why I'm I'm in the tribe with you and that's why I'm I'm in this community. But um and I can't thank you enough for the resources and the advice you provide. I just I think you're amazing. Um, oops. We got you. Okay, my screensaver just went on. You're good. Um, it's just amazing, and it's it's just so empowering to be able to put something out into the world that has a purpose and is there to do something to help others in a way. So I love it, and I'm hooked. I just I can't work fast enough to get enough products out. That's my, my biggest, biggest problem. <laughs> I I can relate. I know I know exactly <laughs> what you mean, Yasmin. Um, hey, in a in a minute, we're going to be turning it over to all of you. And just to remind you, if you've never been here before, this is how this works. So, if you have an ask of the community, if you have a question that you want to go over with myself and or Yasmin, if you have uh, if you're new to the community and you just want to introduce yourself, if you have a product or a service that you want to plug that would be beneficial to the rest of the 1%, this is gonna be your time to be able to do that. So hit use uh, hashtag go live and see money, the birthday man will reach out to you, shoot you a link for you to come join us here inside of the, the room and we can just wrap about whatever is on your mind and whatever you wanna clear or promote whatever it is that you wanna promote. So even if you just wanna say hi, or comment on something that that uh, is going on, or ask Yasmin or myself a question. Just use hashtag Go Live, and we'll bring you here into the the room, and and we'll jam about it. Um, so Yasmin, tell us a tell us a little bit about the brand. I'm sure there's a lot of people who would like to support you. So, um, was it what is it? it's Biomology? Is that right? Biomology. And it's um, this is our first product. We only have this product out right now. This is the prenatal probiotic. And um, it contains 10 billion CFUs, um, and it, it really contains like the, the premium strains for pregnancy, chosen specifically for pregnancy. Um, I think what makes this a little bit different than a lot of other probiotics is one, this is made specifically for pregnancy and for breastfeeding and for postpartum. Um, you know, I, I created it because of my personal experiences with my son having eczema, with postpartum anxiety, which by the way, I didn't even know that was a thing until I was dealing with it and I decided to Google it. Postpartum anxiety is a real thing. Um, and it's just like, it's it just is designed to support the body and the baby during pregnancy, postpartum. Um, we refrigerate. So one thing that makes us different is that we use a refrigerated fulfillment center. I get questions on like, how come your product is a little more expensive? Um, it's because I really made this to be premium, um, like the way that a probiotic should be. This is a glass bottle. We use a refrigerated fulfillment center. We're not in Amazon centers um, because they can get pretty hot in the summertime. Um, we're gonna start like, well, well, we'll be launching an infant probiotic soon too. And I'm so excited about that because I just know after what my son went through with having eczema, like how important the right strains are and how important it is to also have strains in there that are not going to irritate a sensitive baby. Babies come to the world and they're not only just adjusting to everything, but they're also like dealing with things in our diet and like, you know, environmental exposures and stuff like that. So it's really important. I think to have a probiotic that is 
not going to further irritate a baby. It's actually actually going going to help and provide them like beneficial things. So um, we're launching that. And then, you know, my goal with this product is just with this company is just to support moms and babies, basically. I I will will also also say say I'm, I'm planning to also be launching a baby line for the gentle nursery. So, um, I've been focusing so much on biomology and this kind of goes back to saying like, like what I was saying before where I can't launch products fast enough, but I just really want to serve my audience. Like I'm so hungry to do it. I just literally can't get the products out fast enough and do all of the scrutinizing that I do um, to the level that I want to do them. So there's, there, there's just no end to being able to serve your person. And that's really just what I'm trying to do. So yes, yes. I mean, the, just my own curiosity has me wondering, you have, 40% 40% of births now are now C-section. And when when a baby is born with C-section, they don't get the same probiotics that they do through a, through a vaginal birth. So what, is that where an infant probiotic could theoretically help bridge that gap? Is that, is that, that that's the purpose or something like yes, that? Yes, the infant probiotic and the prenatal probiotics because probiotics pass through breast milk too. Um, so this, this is like, that's why I started with the, the prenatal because... Um, so much of like issues babies have can come from mom's gut health. So if like, for example, my gut health wasn't perfect, even though I went to the doctor before I got pregnant, he didn't check my gut health. I didn't know to really look for that. Um, and then, you know, a month after my son was born, he developed a really bad eczema that lasted for like 18 months. And it was just, it was the hardest thing I'd ever gone through. So, um, yes, so many births are through C-section, but even on top of that, people that have vaginal births too might have dysbiosis. They might get, um, antibiotics during labor. Like I did. Um, there's so many reasons that moms don't have perfect gut health and they're passing that on to the baby. So that's why, you know, I just said like, it's, it's so important. And I feel it's still early for this product because not enough people are using prenatal probiotics or if they are taking probiotics, they might just be taking a random like broad spectrum thing, but this is targeted. This is made for these to address these common, common problems. And, and, and like, and that's like, why that's it feels so great to put this out into the world. Yeah, so, so there's a, a few reasons why I'm, I'm harping on, on this. And, and it's because what Yasmin has done well is a, she built an audience she launched a product that was specifically targeted to that audience and she is addressing a very specific pain point point. and yasmin is still early in the physical stage of things but she's done everything right in the in the in the pre in the in the pre-launch right and so now she's live if any of you have a website if you have a by the way i um uh, Yasmin, if you've got Facebook or YouTube open, please close it. Cause I think I might be hearing, okay. It might be on my end. Um, but if you've got, if you have a website, if you have a, if you have a, an audience that would benefit from this, if you know somebody who is a mom, if you are a mom, if you are a parent, if you are expecting, please look up her stuff, add 10 to your cart, actually search, what's, search prenatal probiotic. Find the gentle nursery, click add to cart, quantity 10, order, wait 14 days, come back and review her product once you do. By the way, I if if Yasmin lets me, when she gets closer to the million, we'll absolutely back what she is doing, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to have her on today because the – this process, like, the, you, know, you guys think I'm just teaching you authority site stuff because it's fun. Like, yes, it's fun to talk about. Do you think, like, we're, we're just flapping our gums here? If you do this, then building a seven-figure physical product business or your own thing is a very logical flow from here. It's it's easy. It's simple. It's fast. When you already have the audience, when you've already got the momentum of a content site, which is free to start which can scale over a few months, which gives you enough audience for you to be able to take orders from day one. When you do that, then you build the type of brands that are scalable and sellable over the long term. So these are the types of businesses I love to back. I love to invest in. So it's a perfect case study for what I would suggest you think about if you are either below the million or you are starting something new, this approach just sets you up to have a slam dunk launch 
and a slam dunk process of scaling from zero to a million. All right, one more call to action here. Um, use hashtag go live, and uh, we'll see that we can we can bring you on. I know Paul, you're uh, you're on your way in here, I believe. Yasmin, was there anything that I I I haven't asked you that I should have at this point of the process? I think before I answer that, let me just say, Ryan, it's a done deal. And it would be like amazing to work with you. So <laughs> when I get there, I get perfect. There, it's on. Perfect. Um, I, have, I have no um, doubt. No doubt. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Um, okay. So I, I'm just trying to think like if, if, if I was just starting this process out, I just kind of want to touch on something you said last week, which is don't overthink what you're working on. You know, a lot of people will tell you, go to Ahrefs, go to SEMrush and do all this keyword research and find something that people are searching for. Um, but at the end of the day, it's something that if you're going to be doing this, you have to have the interest in it. You have to have the, the passion for it. And it has to be something that, like, I think is unique to you or just something that, like, does it light a fire within you? Because this is what this site did for me. Um, I didn't do any research. I didn't do any, you know, market research or anything like that. I just knew that this is something I wanted to put out into the world. So I think for someone that is starting out and they're really like want to do this sincerely and not just, you know, they're not like an SEO agency just putting together an authority site, which I hate and kills me. And I just get so mad about it. Um, I would just say, you know, go with what you like, what is authentic to you. Um, you had talked about the points guy he knew how to do all that credit card hacking. That's a great skill to share. What can someone, what can you share that is unique to you? What can you put out into the world? It can be something simple. It can be like a tennis website. Like how do you improve your backhand or something like that? Um, it could be a gardening thing. It could be about, you know, maybe you really have a passion for mattresses, whatever it is that you know a lot about, or you could just literally teach someone about, like, I feel like if you could, if, if you were put on a stage and, and asked to fill space for 15 minutes, what would you talk about? What advice would you give people? What kind of transformation would you help others make? I think that's a good way to start. And if you are approaching it from that perspective, you'll not only um, not get bored, you'll be very motivated, and you'll be serving an audience of people that have something in common with you. So, you know, I like the advice you gave not to overthink it. You know, you don't need to do tons and tons of research. Just write what's authentic. And I think if you're worried about monetization, the, the monetization methods that you mentioned are really smart. Those are the ways to think about it. Um, and, you know, ask yourself, like, are there things I could sell, products I could make or affiliate products I could re recommend and earn affiliate income from? And then you, you have something there. Um, so it's it's good advice. Don't overthink it. Don't make it like this big research project. Just go with your gut. Go with your gut. <laughs> that was a great throw to the probiotic. I go almost reached gut. for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yasmin, you made a, a comment once where you said that I am my own influencer. Would you comment on what you meant by that? Okay, that's a good question. So this is a cool thing. Um, when we are starting physical products brands, a lot of us want to like connect with influencers in our space, people that would be able to um, recommend our product on their social media or recommend our product to their followers, their email list, put us on their blog. But I think the coolest thing that I accidentally created was like I am my own influencer because I have all those resources, I have the audience, and now I'm just taking the serving my customer serving my reader to a whole different level by creating physical products for them so whenever i want to i can put a link on my blog doesn't cost me anything i can do a sponsored i can do a post on my instagram i can do a post in my facebook group and i don't have to go through another gatekeeper to get that um, and i just accidentally created that so it's kind of a beautiful um perk of having created this blog in this community and just, you know, making these products for my audience. I don't have to hunt down influencers and, and you know, ask them to carry my product, ask them to recommend my products because I just can do that myself. I will do that too. I, I mean, I think there are people that I would like to work with, but I don't have, I have a built-in influencer and that's me. <laughs> I, I do want to ask you about the, the Facebook group here in a second, but first, uh, Paul, give me a thumbs up if you are ready to come on live. All right, cool. I'm bringing you in, Paul. What's up, Paul? 
Hi, how are you? Can you hear doing me? good, man. How are you? I'm Jasmine. I'm Hello. doing okay. Okay, now I centered myself. <laughs> What's up, dude? How can we help? Uh, I'm in Thailand, and it's uh, 10 p.m. now. Well, so, what part of Thailand? Uh, Chiang Mai. Awesome. Very North. cool. I have a question. Can I go right into the question? question? Go for it, Paul. Uh, even if it has nothing to do with Jasmine's amazing journey. Come on in. Okay. I'm, I'm, okay. Uh, I have a couple of products uh, that I'm selling in Amazon, but they're random products. And actually, I wrote um, an entry in the uh, 1%. I, want, I would like to target... Uh, the supplement market for men over 50. And I, I, I just want to check what your idea around that, if, if it's a good uh, attempt or should I scratch that idea and go for something else? So you're, you're on, you are on the 20 yard line. I'm going to help you get into the end zone here because there's no such thing as a supplement market. Right. There are only people who buy supplements, right? There's no, sure. there's no prenatal market. There's just pregnant women. That's all there okay. is. So I want you to, I want you to punt the supplement market and go straight for men over 50. Now, now we need to laser in on the men over 50 a little bit. So men over 50, that what? That want a healthy life. Okay, so so do they have a healthy life now or are they trying to get a healthy life because they've beat up their bodies for 50 years? Uh, according to statistics, nine out of 10 men over 50 have some chronic disease. Okay, so, like do, so, so do you want to be a chronic disease company or do you want to no. serve the one out of 10 that are healthy? What do you want to, who do you want to be in the context of, the statistics. Okay. Um, that's a good question, but uh, I would like to answer it this way. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's called a chronic disease because it doesn't make you unhealthy. For example, high blood pressure is high blood pressure. That doesn't mean you're unhealthy. So I want to target men over 50 that want to have um, to have a healthy life. There are men over 50 who don't care, but th there's a group in that uh, men over 50 that are concerned about a healthy life, to do yoga, to enjoy uh, a sexual partner, to enjoy life, to be able to go out and eat uh, once in a while, uh, any, any complete meal without worrying about sugar, without worrying about fat, the carbs. That's what... what okay, I, so, I, so, I so, so we're, we're getting clear here. What you have said is you're not really targeting the one out of 10 that is no. already active in this journey. You're also not targeting the person who doesn't care. So what you're left with is the group of people that have made the decision that they want to go on this journey, but they're starting late in life. So you see how that is a much clearer person than I want to serve the, the man over 50. It's much clearer. Yeah. We, have now, we have now made it specific to the man who is starting later in life of going on a journey of living out his life in a health in a healthy way and enjoying and you mentioned a few benefits that come with that right so that is much much clear and you have a much more specific content arm for you to talk about in terms of the struggles or the pain points that someone might come to late in life because the person who is starting late in life has a different set of problems and a different lens of seeing the world than the person who is 20 and starting this journey it's a completely different person Right. So now you're getting very clear on what that person needs and wants. Can you tell me a little bit about what that person 
is wanting to overcome or experience as a result of going on this journey. It's, I, I would say, I haven't uh, surveyed, but I would say from my experience, I'm 62. So I have, uh, I so, think- So just, just at, so there's, if, if you went through something, then 50,000 other people did too. So yes. you can yeah. totally share from your own experience. What were the challenges you had to overcome? The biggest challenge is to realize that your body is getting old. I, I label myself the 62-year young millennium because I'm tech savvy. Uh, I teach my children about they're 30 years old and I teach them about the apps that are up and coming. I call them and say, hey, did you download this app? No. Oh, amazing. So they tell me you're like a millennial. They, they gave me that name. So, uh, but I realize that my mind is in a different place than my body. And when, when I try to get up or do something I used to be able to do very quickly, like yoga and get up, if I'm sitting on the floor to get up, I realize that I'm not doing it like I thought I was, I, I could do it. As my, my mind remembers, me doing it. So you you remember yourself being 30 as, my, my, and, and, my, ask, and ask anybody who is over 50, they're like, I still feel exactly the same as I do when I was 25. I still think of myself as the same person. Yeah, I think the brain doesn't realize uh, you get old. Yeah, it's so just, that's, like, that's, so that's your problem. message. That's your message, Paul. That's your, like you are speaking to the person over 50 who still feels like they're 25 and wants to feel it physically too. That's your market, right? And so your problems, right. your problems and your content that you are now addressing is the everything that mismatches my 25-year-old version of myself versus my 55-year-old version of myself. Aches and pains, sexual dysfunction, brain fog, tiredness getting up in the morning. These are all of the things that you're now addressing from your content and product perspective. Now you have a very clear lane to run in. You came in saying, I want to be in the, I want to sell supplements to people over 50. Okay. Now you're walking away with a very clear avatar and you can serve that person in a myriad of different ways. Does, does that make sense? It makes absolute sense. Now, can, can I ask you another question? Yep. From that to the tribe or this group and, and the idea to, to communicate with them through some medium like maybe Instagram or a blog, it's, can I talk about random things related to this or do I have to act like the teacher and say, look, you know, um, when you're old, you can I talk about? Don't the teach. Uh, Don't teach. So I can talk about almost anything. Here, well, you anything. can, you can, but also you don't. Like, te teaching is the hardest and the least valuable content. Re relating, sharing, exposing, entertaining inspiring those are all the things that are actually valuable so for you it'd be my recommendation that you stay in a lane for a while and i would suggest that you do that with an authority site rather than trying to create social media content and if you didn't see last week's I overview did. okay I, all right i would i would go hard into that because it's gonna it's gonna build you that foundation and you can talk about whatever you want as long as it's related to the 55-year-old who feels like a 25-year-old. Absolutely, you can. Absolutely. That keeps it fresh and fun and easy and builds personality around the brand. But I would pick one specific mechanism and one specific theme for you to go really deep into. And that gives you the ability to 
to scale from there and to grow on whatever topics that you want to talk about from there. Great. Does that make sense? Yeah, makes makes sense. Uh, we're peeling the onion here, so. Uh, so I want I want you to sit with that, and I want you to start building out, doing the exercises from last week, and that's how you're going to start this thing. Okay. Um, Got it. I just I just joined the group. Um, I, just, I bought the book I just maybe a week ago. Um, I bought and, uh, a week ago. Thank you. And. and uh, I don't know, for some reason, I saw I know, your video reason, about two years ago. Two years ago. I didn't click. Two or three years ago. And the funny thing is that this time I watched it and it clicked. So this it's a very strange uh, situation uh, because I am in an uh, amazing selling machine. And I started looking at your video and uh, I said, no, I don't want to listen to this uh, guy, you know. That millennial. Yeah, that millennial. Yeah. With, with, yeah. Uh, so, I know more than we, him. Yeah, yeah I, of course. And uh, now uh, it clicked and I'm hooked. Uh, I think your model is, is really, it makes a lot of sense, even though there's a lot of people that say, hey, you, know, you can make money with no blogging, with no this, no that. But it, yeah, maybe you can make money, but chase the money. This is like uh, chasing enjoyment, chasing, chasing uh, yeah. something that is sustainable. Uh, I, I feel that I can help men like me. Um, now I have a lot of ideas for the future regarding this, but... I want to focus on on what I have in front of me as opposed to on what I'm going to do when I spend a million dollars. Good, 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 Paul. And to be frank, we love money at capitalism.com. It just happens to elude you when you pursue that over excitement and everything else. Thanks yeah. so much. Thank, thanks so much for uh, for following my work, Paul. We, we, we've got a wrap. So, yes, so, I also want to congratulate you. For her amazing presentation and really, really clever approach. Thank you, Thank you so, so much. much. Thanks, well, Paul. Thank you. All right, see ya. Um, Ryan, Yasmin, what's that, Yasmin? I was just going to say, can I add something to what he said? Please. Um, I think that the difference between what you teach and others in this space is like integrity and audience connection. You're really like the people in this group. The people that follow you, we're serving our customers. We're serving people. And I think that's the real difference. Like I said before, it's not just about like putting a product, finding finding what sells and putting a product on Amazon. That's not what anyone here is doing. And I think that's why, you know, that's why I joined the tribe. That's why I follow you because you, you're teaching something else. You're teaching something on a much deeper level, psychology based and, and really like you're, you're, you're helping people help the world and, and and create change and that's that's so different than what i think anyone else does thanks Jasmine. that means a lot to me i appreciate that before we wrap i was hoping that we could ask you a couple questions about your facebook group specifically that's ten thousand people that's a big audience so i was hoping you could comment on how you built it and um and how you maintain them okay so I built the audience, I built the Facebook group in um, October, I think October of 2017. And the way that I got people in the group was by adding my friends. The first person I added was my mom. And um, I added some friends that were so generous to add their own friends. And then the conversation just started happening. I put prominent links to the Facebook group on my website because I want to connect with my audience and I want them to be part of the group. Um, so there's a lot of links on my site directing people to the group and that's probably where i get the bulk of my traffic but now the site the group is so big that i i'm sure facebook recommends it to a lot of people so i get a lot of i get a lot of exposure to new people as well that haven't necessarily visited my site um when you join the group i do require that you answer all the questions um one of them is like what do you need the most help with because i want to know what people are struggling with Another one is um, an email because I've created an, a welcome series for people that join the group. 
<clears throat> and when they when they join the group, it'll send them like an automatic seven day series that helps introduce them to the whole non toxic lifestyle. Um, and I just launched that a couple months ago, and I really love it. <clears throat> and then otherwise, I'm just in the group every day trying to make sure that um, questions are answered. And you know, we have a lot of rules because it's a big group, so I, I try to make sure like there's no promotion or like people aren't just posting things that aren't relevant. Um, but it's something I have been part of every single day. Like I have been active in this group for every single day since the day that I launched it. And it has just grown so much because um, word of mouth has helped a lot. I try to make it a really non-judgmental space. Again, it just goes back to serving your person. And in my case, people need mommy groups. You know, when you're up at 3 a.m. breastfeeding or like you have a crying baby, you don't know why he's crying. Like you you want to have a place to go if you like just can't go back to sleep or something like that. So um, I, I wanted to make it a really safe and non-judgmental space for, for parents. And so I think that's one of the reasons that it has grown. Like we don't really get into controversial topics. We don't allow anything disrespectful. We try to stay really on topic. Um, and it's just a really great environment. People help each other every single day. Beautiful. Love how you put that. Um, we're going to wrap with a waste. So a waste, you're going to get the last word today. Give me a thumbs up if you're ready. All right, let's do this. What's up, dude? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good. Good. How are you? I'm wrestling. <laughs> so, there you go. Cheers, guys. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Yeah, cool. What can we do for you, a waste? Uh, it's my birthday today, so I'm spending it with you guys. Bro. Oh, you and C Money are twins. <laughs> I'm two years older, but just found out. <laughs> well, what's up, dude? What can we help you with? Uh, this is on building Facebook groups. Um, so I know, uh, Ryan, you build your yoga group, but not with the actual brand, but with I Love Yoga. And I don't know if Yasmin has done something similar. So I just want to know kind of why you've built done it that way and not built it directly to your group. I'm I'm okay, actually gonna let I'm I think Yasmin is way better at this than me. So I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Yasmin comment on this of, of do you go with a brand specific group or do you go for the person specific group? Like is your group called the gentle nursery or is it called mom's blank? What do you call yeah. it? Yeah. So I I actually thought a lot about this when I first created the group. I wanted to reach a wider audience than just people that knew about my blog. So I called it non-toxic mommies. Um, and the reason I did that was because I knew that people would be finding me on Facebook and I would be reaching new people just through Facebook's algorithm. So for the gentle nursery, that's what I did. And that, that is what worked. Um, I am thinking about creating like a pregnancy group or something like that for biomology. And I might make that a branded one simply because I already have the big Facebook group. And now I want to create something for my customers, something that supports, um, moms during pregnancy and birth and, and all of that stuff. So I feel like, you know, you kind of have to just think about what angle you're going for. And if you're going for like, I think in your case, you know, um, like techies or entrepreneurs, like maybe you will you'll be able to reach a wider audience, at least in the beginning, just by making it non-brand specific, just just targeting the person and supporting these people and helping them and becoming um, a, a trusted source of advice and information and a trusted resource for these individuals. That's my thought. Okay, cool. And did, did you promote within your own Facebook group or was it just because you're providing content that people are ultimately asked you about kind of the things that you were doing? Um, it's a little bit of both. So I'm basically the only person that can promote in my Facebook group. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I do, I post new articles there. I post, I post my product, I post updates. Um, and anytime someone has a question and I can answer it with an article, I will absolutely link to my article. I don't force it, I don't overdo it because I don't like that either. Mm -hmm. um, but I do it in a way that I find is helpful. And again, it, it just goes back to serving the community, serving the, the person. And when you are on a mission to help people, there's no reason that you wouldn't put a helpful post or a helpful mm -hmm. product link. Um, you're not selling, you're, you're solving. Right, right, cool. Um, yeah, the question I had was around the two separate websites that you got, or two, two separate things. So one's called Gentle Nursery, right? And the other one's uh, Biomeology. Biomology. Yeah. So why are they two separate and not one? Um, that's a really good question. I felt like the gentle nursery will be the baby line 
And biomology just felt, it just felt different to me. It felt like its own baby. <laughs> it felt like its own thing. Um, yeah. And so I didn't want to conflate the two. I don't want to mix the two, even though I still use the gentle nursery to promote biomology. Um, I, I also, you know, the gentle nursery is a very personal brand to me. I don't know that I would ever want to give that up, but I feel like I could create biomology into something that like maybe, you know, one day I would transfer onto somebody else. So um, I, I think that it was just a, a lot of things involved there. Um, I'm not sure it was the best branding decision. Maybe Ryan can comment on that, but um, I, it just, it just, it's just what felt right. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, always. Good to see you, dude. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. All right. See Bye. Bye. Well, Yasmin, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Um, everybody, if, if you got value out of this, there's there are a few ways that you can show your appreciation. First of all, we do hashtags as applause here at capitalism.com. So if you got value out today, please give Yasmin some hashtags in the comments of the stream. Uh, second, her brand is called Biomology, Bio, Biomology, and you can find it on Amazon. Go add it to your cart, link to her site. If you know somebody who would benefit from it, please do that. If you want to help spread what we do here at capitalism.com, make sure you are over on YouTube subscribed and you like this video. And finally, if you want to inspire more people like Yasmin, my book, 12 Months to 1 Million, is really, really good. We're sitting at about 65 reviews on Amazon right now, and I want to see that cross 75 over the next few days. If you bought the book and you liked the book and you read the first chapter and you liked it, please do me a solid and go over to Amazon. Hit, hit Command-T on your, on your, on your uh, keyboard right now. Open up a tab for Amazon. So that you don't forget, and please do that. It would mean the world to me. Yasmin, I'm so rooting for you, so believe in you. I have no doubts about crossing seven figures with the brand. I can't wait to help. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Thank you, Ryan. This was amazing. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with us in the 1%. We will see you next week. Take care.